Last night, we brought you the story of Caitlin Johnson, a young girl who beat cancer with the help of a revolutionary treatment. Tonight, a look at what that medicine costs and the complicated business of a truly personalized drug. Meg Terrell has the second and final part of our Modern Medicine series. Mandy and James Johnson say when it came to treating their daughter Caitlin's cancer, no price would have been too high. Money would have never been a, a deciding factor. After two and a half years of chemotherapy failed her, Caitlin found success with an experimental treatment that used her own immune cells to clear her leukemia. The FDA approved the first of its kind drug August 30th. Its price, $475,000. Even at a time of eye-popping drug prices, that number raised eyebrows. Doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering said it, quote, shattered oncology drug pricing norms. The medicine, called Kimraya, is unique in several ways. Each patient's therapy is made from her own immune cells, requiring a more complex manufacturing process. The price is for a one-time treatment. And the number of patients for whom the drug is approved is small, about 600 people in the U.S. each year. A new type of medicine like this, and there will be so many others that are administered just once and for profound benefit, um, really require us as a community to identify you know, appropriate um, and fair uh, pricing structures. Novartis, which markets Kimraya, said that some outside analyses suggested a fair price could be as high as $600,000. The company also employed a new pricing model. For patients covered by a government program, Novartis only gets paid if their cancer is clear 30 days after treatment. The CAR-T therapy is administered to all patients who need it. And um, if the medicine is working at a fixed period of time, uh, then uh, Novartis is um, compensated, and if it doesn't, um, then um, we feel good about having provided this chance for that patient. Kimraya's success rate in clinical trials was more than 80 percent. And Novartis isn't the only company working in this new technology. The same week Kimraya was approved, biotech giant Gilead spent $12 billion to acquire Kite Pharma. Approval of its medicine for another kind of blood cancer could come later this year. Other companies, including Celgene, Juno Therapeutics, Bluebird Bio, and Selectus, are also working to adapt immune cells into better cancer hunters. It's a market Cowan Research estimates could reach $5 to $10 billion at its peak. As companies work to expand the technology's reach, its cost will continue to come into question. I think it's easier to, to swallow a price tag like this when you're talking about a kid who has 70 years more life uh, available to them if they are cured. Caitlin's treatment was paid for by Novartis because she was in its clinical trial, but the rest of her care has been costly. Our insurance has been billed in excess of $10 million for um, Caitlin's treatment from day one to current. Doctors say we're still in the early days of this new way to treat cancer. So the question will continue to be asked, how do you put a price on life? For Nightly Business Report, I'm Meg Terrell.